OK, I will start it off in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Taylor Adams Sports Podcast. I'm here with Stephen Shrum, and how are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm good. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Did you call your mom? I did. I called her a couple of times. It's like our annual tradition. Like I call her throughout the day. That's great. Yep. We had some mimosas this morning and did some Krispy Kreme donuts, I was telling you earlier. And um, it's been good. It's kind of raining here, so it's a little bit of a bummer, but. Absolutely. That sucks. Well, um, I appreciate you coming on the show. For those of you who don't know, Stephen is one of my mentors and has been since the end of my college career. And he's been just great at helping me kind of figure out what I want to do and best practices. So he's also become a good friend. And I think the craziest part is that we've actually never met in person. <laughs> yes, that is very crazy. So it's, it's, he decided to not call me when he was in Indy once. And I still hold it to him to this day because that would have been our moment. Yep, absolutely. But, <laughs> um, I'm excited to kind of talk about what you do. I think a lot of the time people don't understand what really goes into the internal side of a team, especially in collegiate football. So, um, to kick things off, why don't you just talk a little bit about kind of who you are and, and what you do with Kent State? So I'm the director of player personnel for Kent State football. Uh, my job is to oversee our recruiting and evaluation process and ensuring that our mission is being fulfilled in our recruiting philosophy. Um, so that's my primary job. Um, I also manage the scholarship numbers, um, work with our operations department for recruiting visits, and then I also uh, manage the walk-ons and watch game tape on our prospective student athletes. So have you been watching film of, of student athletes? Is that what kind of got you into it? Or, or how did you know you wanted to go into the recruiting side of a football team? So I always wanted to be a scout. Um, and that's how my job has kind of been going for me. Um, so the evaluation side is something I've always been passionate about. I knew I was never going to play football professionally. Being a 5'8", 150-pound uh, kid, um, so I knew that was not my calling, um, but I always was enamored with the game of football and it's something I always enjoyed watching and learning about. And that's kind of how it started is um, I wanted to follow my passion, which was evaluating. And um, it just so happened that I got into recruiting. Yeah, absolutely. So I know of a little bit of recruiting just from working with Indiana football, and I know kind of the time and effort that goes into evaluating prospects. And then I've tried to do it. You've tried to help me do it, and I'm not not the best at it. I can kind of get the, the basics, but um, it takes a lot of practice and skills. So what were some of the things that you did or that helped you kind of grow with evaluating film? Because it's not just something that you can quick learn and, and be really good at. Correct. So I've been doing it since I was in high school, uh, as a junior in high school, and it's something that does take a lot of practice and it takes someone that's willing to look at the intricacies of player movements and understanding where they fit in schemes. Um, I've had a lot of great mentors that have taught me what to look for in players. Um, I've had a lot of successes and some failures along the way and looking at players and applying those lessons to how I further evaluate players. Um, but just having those mentors show me what it takes to be successful in this industry is how it really became my dream and how it became fruition. Right. So on average, when you were in college or, you know, you, you probably still do it to this day, how many hours are you spending actually watching film of these players to really know who you want to recruit? So I spend probably three fourths of my day doing it. Um, okay. Right now I'm spending about 12 to 13 hours a day just watching film and evaluating players and looking to see if there's commonalities between plays. Um, for, my, for my job, I don't look at highlight tapes as much as other personnel people do. Um, it's not something that our philosophy is built on um, without giving our recruiting process away fully. 
Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's something that has worked really well for us and, um, and just being on top of it and, you know, watching film all day. Sure. And so, I mean, you've been with some pretty big name school. You've been with Northwestern, you've been with Syracuse. How did you, you get there? What were the tools, the resources that you kind of got the in and, and how do you think you stood out to be able to get to the position that you're in right now? I would say for me, the biggest struggle that I had was I didn't play football ever. Um, and that's something that is very unique and is pretty impossible to do as a non-football player to get in, involved with evaluating. Sure. Um, so that's something, that's one hill I had to climb. And then also not being a collegiate athlete on top of that. Um, so um, every job I've gotten, and we've kind of talked about it, is because of someone's helped me get to that position. Sure. Um, I started out in high school and my high school coach helped me get a couple internships with the Baltimore Raven scouting department and helped me get attached to the university of Maryland as an equipment manager. So my journey started as an equipment manager, right. uh, doing laundry and, you know, doing whatever it took for the team to be successful. Um, I got to the university of Florida. I transferred there and I got there because of Bush Hamden who was a GA at Maryland that now works at University of Missouri. Um, I got to Towson University because of Tyler Bone, who's now the tight end coach at Penn State. I got to um, Northwestern because of a GA at Florida named Andy Bowamini. I got to school down the road. We don't say that name because of the DFO at Northwestern. And then I got to Syracuse because my boss, who was at Towson, um, called me up and asked if I'd be interested. So Every position I've gotten is because of someone else's belief in me. Sure. And that goes, you know, true to your, your hard work and your dedication. So um, that's great. And I think that you've done a, a really good job of just getting to where you want to be. We talk about this all the time, that it is about showing, you know, how dedicated you are and, and really pursuing your passion. So that's awesome. And um, you're in such a unique position. There's only a handful of people that have your position and, you um, you know, working with a program like Indiana when I was an intern, they put me in a really good position, even though I, I wasn't a, a college athlete and I'm a female and yep. um, I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about football until I actually got to college and started working for the team. And, you know, I've gotten to meet a lot of really great coaches and personnel staff and people in college football, the NFL and other leagues. And it's really helped me kind of navigate the places that I've been to. So that's great. But you know, I know this from working for a team, but a lot of people who are probably listening don't know what goes into an official visit weekend. <laughs> and so I think if you've ever been to a college football game or even an NFL game, you see there's a lot of people with credentials on the field, right? And some of those are recruits. And um, while it looks like, you know, they just come to the game and leave, there's a lot that goes into a weekend and a whole academic year of recruiting high school players to eventually, you know, accepting the scholarships and so on and so forth. So for you from like a Thursday to a Monday morning, what does an official visit look like? What are your duties? What are you doing? So it actually starts on that Sunday um, and ensuring that all the flights are booked, that everyone's on the same schedule, um, that um, everyone has a pickup time, that we're working with our GAs and our DFO who helps me um, orchestrate the official visit, you know, um, and just ensuring all the minute details are seen and fulfilled. Um, it's probably the most mundane task in ensuring <laughs> that everything is, is completed, but I'm lucky that I have a coworker and Jake Olson and, um, that allows me to watch film. And I know that he'll help me get the job done, which is awesome to have is, um, having a teammate like him, you know, succeed. And, you know, that's kind of how it goes. You know, official visits really start months before that, as you know. Right. So recruiting and evaluating and ensuring that the players are cultural fit. And even then, you still don't know if you get them until they sign their national letter of intent. Right. And that's crazy. And Jake's awesome. It's, it's funny because I – talked to Jake when he was back at Yale and he was super helpful. He's been kind of a guide to someone to, to give me some good advice when I was looking to go into operations and ended up going to the football meetings and 
um, that was in Charlotte, I believe, and got to actually meet Jake, and he's great. So I'm sure you guys definitely uh, hit it off when he started yeah. working there too. So yeah, he's great. Um, so you get, you know, you make sure everything's good, and then the the weekend comes, and the game's on a Saturday. So what is what are you doing? Are you you know, the, every school does something a little different. Yep. You obviously have them for the weekend. So without giving too much away, what do you, what is like your go-to with them? So my tasks during game day are a little bit different than other personnel people. Um, Jake is handling the team and I'm overseeing the unofficial visits and the official visits at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we have about 60 to 80 prospects that come to campus while also having three to four official visits at a time. So just juggling that and then also, um, you know, having great interns help me um, fulfill our mission and making sure that everything's seamless. And then when we get on the field, I help Coach Lewis, our head coach, uh, meet with prospects, the high end prospects that we're targeting to right. ensure that they get a piece of him before the game starts when obviously his attention is somewhere different. Um, and then during halftime, they usually are getting food. Uh, meeting with our athletic director, um, and then also at the same time making sure that our unofficial visitors have attention on them as well. Um, and then after the game when we win, um, they all go to the locker room. And that's that's a circus because there's 60 right. baby prospects in the, in the locker room after a game. And then we have this thing called Club Dub, which all our players are going nuts and the prospects get into it. And then uh, making sure the prospects meet with, the head, uh, meet with their area coaches, while also handling the official visitors, making sure that they're getting out of the locker room so that we can go to dinner. And then also, you know, accompanying Coach Lewis to his press conference at the same time. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces and you got to have a great team behind you um, to make it successful. I was going to say, there's got to be a lot of uh, attention to detail in your position, especially working with high school and college athletes. There's a lot of NCA rules that I'm sure you deal with. So what are some of the things that you mentioned you have interns? What mm -hmm. are some of the responsibilities that you kind of, you know, let your interns have on game days to mm -hmm. relieve that and, you know, that you trust them with that people who are looking to get into this industry or, or to your position and want to get experience would expect to do on a game day? So the number one thing that I look for in interns is being able to trust them, um, being able to, that all the tasks that I ask them to do is going to be completed to the best of their ability. I don't expect any intern to be perfect, um, but if they're trying and thinking on their feet and understanding that there's a lot of moving parts and they can't freak out um, is important. And then as we talk about all the time um, for interning, you got to be dedicated. And, and, you know, I put, our interns through a lot of tests to see if this is something they really want to do with their lives, you know, and a lot of people right. don't, you know, and they realize that, you know, working 14 to 16 hour days in football is not something that they want to do with their lives. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the ones that do stick around are usually very successful. Um, yeah. But during game days, I usually have them handle, help me with logistics, um, tickets, you know, um, shuffling people back and forth, um, making sure that all the prospects are off the field by the 18 minute mark. Right. Um, so, because they're not allowed to be on the field um, mm -hmm. during um, after warmups when the band's on the field, cause that's considered a extra benefit. Um, right. And oh. then there's all little rules. So um, making sure that if there is a player that shows up late, that they're at the ticket window, uh, making sure everything's set up properly, the wristbands, you know, TVs, lobby just everything set up to standard um and that's a lot of juggling and that's a lot of pressure because there's tons of things going on that right. they're, they're not aware of that's going on but they're they have a big piece of the puzzle and if they're not successful we're not successful um yeah. obviously the responsibilities grow from there you know if they if they are succeeding in those roles mm -hmm. and i mean i'd almost argue that with any position and with any industry you have to be professional in your job right yep. that that goes without saying but i think even more so whether you're an intern or you're working on the internal side of a team i think it's even more crucial to be extremely professional because you are working directly with 
kids under 18, you're working with professional athletes, you're working with college athletes, and there's a lot of confidential things that you're going to hear and you're going to see, and not to say that they're bad, but just things that can't get out or that could get the school, the player, the person in a lot of trouble if Mm -hmm. it's not handled uh, with care. So um, I think sometimes there's a misconception that, you know, you want to work in sports and you want to work with the players and, and that's great. And there's some really cool opportunities that you get with working on the internal side of a team. But I think also it's a very professional job and you have to act that way. You can't get starstruck. You can't act as if you're a fan, you're, you're representing whoever you're working for and you're, you're a part of that team. And so anything you do is going to be a reflection of that. So um, I don't, argue that if you're going to be an intern that's something you got to consider because while it's awesome and it's a lot of fun and you get to see some really cool things it's a job and your your job is to do that job correctly and with professionalism so um, I think that's super important so with that anyone who would want to get an internship in football or, or see that side what would you recommend them them doing because I think a lot of the time that isn't necessarily a posting, especially at colleges, there's not, you know, sign up to work for the football team. Um, It is kind of a networking in. So what would you recommend someone who's looking to get in to do? I would say that the biggest thing that they have to understand is you have to be obsessed with the sport. You can't be a fan. You can't just like it. You have to absolutely love it. Um, It sounds really cool getting into it. Oh, I got to work with the football team, but it's not. You're going to be getting into the littlest task and you're not going to get a lot of fanfare for it. Um, You know, you have to be prepared to bet on yourself and volunteer and spend a lot of time doing the grunt work. Um, You know, I spent a couple years after college volunteering and, you know, that's not easy for a lot of people to swallow. Right. Um, um, You know, and it's not about skill set. It's more about your being able to trust someone and their passion for the sport and then you can teach the skills later. Um, but do you really, the number one advice I would have is you have to be willing to do whatever someone asks of you. Once you get your foot in the door, you have to do the best you can, um, be willing to stay late, come in early, um, do whatever's asked of you. Um, always ask if there's something else that you can do for them. The hardest thing, and we've talked about this is getting your foot in the door, right? Getting your foot in the door is one of the hardest things to do. You know, for myself, I don't have a last name that's correlated to professional football or scouting Mm -hmm. Um, and getting opportunities. You just have to you're not going to start at the top. People have to understand that that is one of the toughest things to swallow is everyone thinks they can run a front office or scouting department, but they truly can't until they're in it to understand how hard it is to handle. Um, So with that, would you say, you know, me being a girl, I, I've told you some of the things that I've dealt with, um, mm-hmm. good and bad, being on that side of the business, because it is a lot less of a norm for for women to be on the internal side of a football program. And it's, it's growing. And I know a, a lot of girls that are in it, and they're great, and they're super successful, and they're treated with the utmost respect. But what do you think that future is for, for women? And, you know, is it possible to to get up there and be a DFO or be a director of some sort? Absolutely. I think um, football is becoming more accepting of women working in sports. And it's awesome to see, you know, um, a lot of my interns have been females um, because I understand how the struggle of getting into a sport like I can relate. Obviously, I'm not a female, but I can relate to the hard hardships it takes to succeed in this business. You know, my first intern that I hired um, ended up working for the Baltimore Ravens marketing department, you know, um, one of my interns now who's a female is our swag coordinator, you know, and females just as well as men can succeed in this business. It's yeah. all about your belief in yourself. Absolutely. That's great. So we've talked about all the ins and outs of kind of your job, what you do, but we haven't really talked about what are some of the things like you love about your job. And um, obviously what you want to do is what you're doing and that's that's great but what are some of the cool moments or things that you won't forget that kind of make it all worth it i would say our bowl game this year you know getting in on the ground floor with coach lewis who brought me along with him from syracuse and just seeing the culmination of our work Mm -hmm. and the success that we're having um you know kent state historically has not been a winner um when we got there i think they only won six games out of the last four years 
Um, our first season was not successful. We were two and 10, but you could see the change happening and seeing the success and the belief our kids have in our mission and their passion for football is one of the coolest things to see. You know, one of the things I love about my job is I'm not the face of the program. I'm in the background. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want the, I don't, I'm not someone that goes out and looks for publicity, like look at me, look at me. So that's something I enjoy seeing our coaches succeed, right. um, seeing them win and, and just having a, a piece of the success is awesome. Um, another thing I really love about my job is finding kids that are under recruited um, and seeing their successes in college football, whether they sign with us or not. Um, that's one of the coolest things ever is to find someone that's not being recruited and you see the talents that no one else might not be able to. Um, so that's something I enjoy. And then obviously working with our kids and seeing them grow up and seeing them achieve their dreams um, is really cool. Absolutely. Do you think you'll ever want to work in, in the NFL in that side and, and go to the scouting world? Or do you think you want to stay with college? One day, you know, I want to achieve my dreams of winning a championship and building a championship team. Right. Um, and I really enjoy working with our head coach. He's one of the best people I've ever worked with. Um, he was, if you know anything about college football and you know about Pat Fitzgerald, Pat Fitzgerald, who's the head coach of Northwestern, him and coach Lewis are very similar minded and, and are very great people. Um, coach Lewis allows me to do my job. Um, he allows me to voice my opinion. Um, he allows me to, control my shop and it's not very many head coaches will allow someone to do that, especially at 28 years old, um, sure. you know, and him also being the youngest head coach in the, in the country still, he's only 34. It's right. just really cool to be on this journey with him. And I'm honestly not really looking. That's great. So to sum it up in, in one final question, I guess, what is, what are you most looking forward to this upcoming season? I mean, there's a lot going on right now and we're going to see this unfold as we get further into it, but for, for college football and for Kent state, what are you most excited for? I'm excited for our first game to get back. We've been out of the office for two months. Right. Um, my job really hasn't changed. If anything, it's increased because there's less distractions. Um, right. And our coaches are being more personnel people than coaches right now, which is kind of funny to see their, reactions of what a NFL personnel department is really about just evaluating and talking to kids and getting information. So for me, I'm enjoying it. You know, I get to sit in my chair all day and watch film and um, it's just something that's, it might sound mind numbing, but it's awesome. Just yeah. watching film all day. Yeah. Um, so I'm just looking to get back in the office and being around our players and get back to practice because season's almost here. Yeah. I think, that you are a great representation of someone who really did, you know, work your butt off to get where you are and you truly do love what you do. And outside of all the the cool factor of your job, you know, your day to day behind the scenes is really what you enjoy. And I think that's the coolest part about like seeing you go from team to team and whatever you're doing, it doesn't really matter because you you love what you do at the end of the day. And that's the most important important part, especially when you're working in sports, because you can lose side of that really fast. So if you love what you're doing, um, you'll continue to want to get better and, and work really hard. So um, that's great. And hopefully one of these days we'll be able to actually yeah. meet in person. I'm going to try and come to a game uh, yeah. with hockey. You know, we have 44 games a year, so it gets pretty crazy. But I'm going to make it to one. I'm going to make the drive, yeah. get out there, uh, and then we'll be able to meet. But I appreciate you being on this Um Again, I don't think there's a lot of platforms where you can see the insights of what recruiting is for college football. You know, you see the big names and this recruit's going here, you know, they're doing this and and that's awesome. But to really see what a day to day looks like in someone like your position is is awesome. And I think you'll really help a lot of students and people that are looking to get their foot in the door. So Absolutely. that's awesome. But I appreciate it. Uh, we'll we'll talk soon here. Yep. If anybody has any questions, go to my Instagram. Steven will be tagged on there. I'm totally suggest going to follow him, find him on LinkedIn. He is an awesome resource. He puts out really good content, and I think he's just an awesome person to know and follow. So 
we will talk soon. I appreciate it and uh, have a great rest of your weekend. You too.